morning, good morning, good morning. This is your Filipino hamburger, and welcome to our first Facebook Live with no less than your job coach, Germany, Lisa Jan. Hello, Lisa. Hi. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so thank excited you. to be here. <laughs> thank you, thank you for accepting the invitation. I mean, our first session um, was fun, and I think we were managed to um, inform and inspire our listeners or viewers. And so we are doing another round. Yay! This time, we are switching the role. So I'll be interviewing your job coach, Germany. I prepared some questions. <laughs> and for today's session, we will be talking about the labor market in Germany, job application as an expat or as an international um, individual who wants to, uh, let's say, have a career in Germany or in general, okay? So why not start with um, a self-introduction? Lisa, please. <laughs> Okay, well, well, again, uh, thank you very much for having me. And it was really a pleasure to interview you last time. So I wanted to say thank you for that again, because there were so many people that contacted me and said, oh, this is so interesting. And somehow they really liked the energy between the two of us. <laughs> so that was really cool. And it just felt like talking to a friend, like we've been knowing each other for for so many years. Exactly, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, it's the same. It's the same. I was like, whoa. The energy and then the rapport, and I was like, okay, it's natural. Yeah, it was yeah. not <laughs> right, right. So, well, my name is Lisa, and I'm also known as Job Coach Germany, and I support international professionals with finding a job in Germany, but not just any job, but their dream job. So, basically, I support them along the entire application process with which basically means finding the ideal job, preparing the job application doc documents, which includes the cover letter and the CV. And then I also do something that is very interesting to some people. It's called mock job interviews. So basically I'm the HR lady and ask the questions. We have a real life interview and I give feedback right there and then on what they could improve for the actual interview that might happen a couple of days later. And then, and then also after that, um, I try to support my clients with regards to what is interesting or important to look at in the work contract and what to basically figure out during the probationary period. Because many people think that the job application process actually ends uh, once you have landed the job, but it actually doesn't. It only ends once you are happy with the job that you have. And as long as you're not happy with the job, just keep applying. That's what <laughs> I want to say. <laughs> yeah, and maybe just real quick, I'm, I'm uh, based in the northern part of Germany, but not as far north as John. Um, I'm close to Magdeburg, and Magdeburg is between Berlin and Hanover, right in the middle. This is where I am. Yeah, but I, I support my clients from all over the world, and I do that online. So with Zoom meetings, for example. Wow, thank you. So basically, you are with them from the beginning till they feel that or till they reach the happiness. Or yes. say, you know, they are happy, comfortable, and contented with their job. Yes. You just don't let them, or you just don't release them after signing the contract. So you yes. stay until the probationary period ends. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, that is what um, is my aim. That's my goal, and to, to ah. support them for the entire process, basically. But normally, when they are when they already landed the job, um, it's kind of that the candidate always thinks, okay, I'm done, finally, that's great. But there are so many things that we need to figure out, and also certain aspects that are included in the German work contract that people from outside of Germany don't even have, or have never heard about. Exactly. And then after a couple of years, they realize, hmm, maybe I should have talked to my manager about that. And um, this is just something that I would like to point out to them as well, so that they get the full benefit from the very first day they start working. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, um, by mentioning that, I remember that every time or before I sign a contract, I consult German friends <laughs> who, let's say, are uh, familiar with the labor market in Germany. Yes. And they're like, Perfect. 
should I sign it or not? <laughs> yes. And I was like, am, am I am I getting the things that I should be getting or? <laughs> and they say, no, no, go sign it. I was like, okay, Fine. that's all the time. Yeah. Special, you know, especially yeah. for someone like me who is an expat international who's not really familiar yeah. with labor laws, benefits, and whatsoever in Germany. I think it's very important. To yes, right. And it, like you. It's also um, not only that expats have problems with the work contract details, because obviously we Germans love bureaucracy and that's why the work contracts seem a little bit extended sometimes. And I've seen Germans also signing work contracts that are way out of my mind, where I thought, why did you ever sign that contract? It's especially when we're looking at... Um, the, the paragraph that states when you can leave the company, because just in case you find a different job. And then, for example, in that in that particular field or in that paragraph, it states, well, you have to wait seven months. Well, it happens and people sign that. But it's yeah. just like this is like you're a slave of that company and you can never get out because if you tell a new company, OK, we I would like to work with you, but I can only start in seven months. Yeah. Hmm, that's a little problem. And that's why it's, it's not an issue just for expats, but obviously that's my, that's, that's my hard business, as I would say, because I would like to support expats finding a job in, in Germany. And I would like to help them see all of the little details that there are. Of course, that's, that's very important. And you mentioned also about the probationary period, like you don't just let your client... Um, you don't let go then during the probationary period. For me, one of the crucial parts of starting a job is the probationary period because yes. it's, I mean, that's when you realize, ah, okay, is this a job for me? Am I the right person for me? I mean, that's also the, the thinking of the Arabite giver or the employer. Is John the right person? So I was like, you know, so it's either you, you will give your best or like, oh, no, I'll, I'll leave. So yes. thank you for mentioning about the probationary period, no? Yeah. And now, based on your experience and um, with your client, and I think last time you mentioned you also worked as an HR. Now my question is, what makes an application stand out? Yeah. Well, um, first of all, there are obviously always trends going on and people would like to stand out and be like the first one to be chosen. But actually, you have to see it from the HR person view and then what happens normally is that there is a deadline until when you can apply and what happens then so normally in a bigger company at least the HR people won't look at any of the applications before the deadline has ended so what they do they pile up all of the applications and then once the deadline has ended maybe on a Friday and then on a Monday they take this huge pile and think okay well, now I can look at all of them so First of all, it doesn't really make sense. And I would always try to convince my clients not to call the company before the deadline ends. <laughs> but after the deadline has ended, you normally have about two weeks. And if you haven't heard anything, then, then you can contact them. But now, if you are within that pile, obviously, there are a lot of um, application documents that I have seen from my clients where there is still a lot of text. So, and here, let me tell you, less is more. <laughs> so basically, sometimes uh, HR people only need a couple of seconds to take a look at it and, and think, oh, that's just way too much text. I'm not reading that. And then it it goes into the trash can. <laughs> and then the next one, right. So um, basically the, 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 the basis of the application documents is the one page cover letter and a maximum of two pages for your, for your um, CV. And with that being said, it's always interesting. And obviously um, what makes this application stand out is it, if it's really fitted to that particular company, if it's really fitted to the particular position. So, and with that, you, you basically use the um, job ad and then you take a look at the requirements and you take a look at the must-haves or the nice-to-haves. And then you try to use the same wording, the same phrases that they are using in the ad for your covering letter, for example. And with that, first of all, if there is a huge company 
let's say like Airbus or any other bigger company that are using software to scan through all of your application documents. That's how they scan through these through these documents, basically. Do, does the co candidate use the words and phrases that are in the job ad? So the first hurdle is taken basically because you have matched the software that they're using. And then also a lot of people from, uh, from abroad are very hesitant to use pictures because abroad it's uh, seen and classed as discrimination if you include a picture on your CV. However, in Germany, a lot of conservative companies still expect a picture. Nowadays, with all of the um, newer technology and the platform that the company actually organizes for you to upload your application documents, um, it's easier because you can find out, is there a particular area where they say, please upload picture, because then you know, okay, they really want to have a picture. If they don't have this field or this area, you can leave it out. The trend is going towards less pictures and obviously less discrimination. However, this is a very slow process because in Germany, it was very common to send pictures. With, with modern startups and younger companies, it's it's typical that you don't send any pictures anymore. But if you're going for those bigger companies, the, the ones that have been established for several years in Germany, still go with a picture because that makes your, your application stand out for sure. And then um, also something that I normally see from my clients is that expats don't even know what the German standard looks like. So, <laughs> and um, so le let me just uh, take it or let us just take a look at the CV, for example. So just take one category of your work experience. So you write the company and the area or the city where you worked mm -hmm. and of course your position. And then, for example, if we are looking at an English at an English CV, there will be bullet points, bullet points, bullet points. So maybe up to five or 10 bullet points. Sometimes I even see texts, like a whole paragraph of right. what people have done. And here I would always say, if you want to stick with the bullet points, you can, but only take three highlights of that particular position that you've had. So the three biggest accomplishments that you've done during that period when you worked there in that particular position. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you work, if you've worked with that company for 20 years, I've had that before, then you can obviously use more bullet points, maybe five, six or so, because then you maybe just have this one work experience and that is fine. But stick with less is less. more. Less is more. I mean, um, just going back to the CV, you know, mm -hmm. Um, there are also questions like, what should go first, my education background or my professional experience? Ah. Should I put all my professional experiences there? I mean, what should I, what should I include in my curriculum today? I'm like, I have a lot of experience, but I'm not sure if this is like a good thing to, to showcase in my curriculum today or not. So what's yeah. your thought of that? That's a great Great question. Um, and I've, I've stumbled across this question a couple of times. It's basically, if you have, um, if you're just finishing your studies and you've, you've done probably a couple of internships or an apprenticeship and something like that, then I would always stick with the one thing that is most um, topical. So you've just finished university. So basically you start with your educational background because this is the last thing that you've done. But if you've already had some work, work experience and you've had um, a couple of years with a different with different companies, for example, then you stick with the um, work experience first because this is what the employer sees first, right? So put the focus on what you've done in your last position or what, what has been your, your focus in the last couple of months, for example. And something, let me tell you something that is very interesting here. Things that 
um, HR people are asking during the job interview all the time are the intervals in between. So the, the gaps, basically, that they really want to know. So why did you have that gap? And what did you do during that gap? So did you uh, did you lie on the couch and were lazy? Or did you just do like, tr did you travel? Where did you travel? What did you like most about the travel? So they really get into that because they want to get to know you as a person and want to get to know, okay, do you have self-motivation or not? And this is what they're looking for because one of my clients pointed that out last week. I had this job interview and they were constantly asking about the intervals. And I was just, oh, really? Well, yeah, that's what we do. And, um, and um, so basically, obviously, if you have a huge amount of work experience, you should also just focus on the main things, but try to make it look that you don't have intervals. Mm -hmm. huh? Focus on the relevant experiences. To, yes. I mean, relevant to the job that you are applying. Yes. For. I mean, yes. For example, maybe during your um, university days, you work in KFC. I'm sorry, in a, uh, a food chain, and then like, yes. and now you are work, uh, applying a job in Airbus, for example. Yes. Yeah. Right, exactly. And this is something. So, for example, when I was um, 16 in our school, it was uh, mandatory for us to do an apprenticeship. Uh, no, an internship for only a week. Yeah. And I went to the hospital because I wanted to become a doctor when, <laughs> when I was still 16 years old. And then during that internship, I found out, okay, this is not what I want to do. <laughs> but, but this is something that I don't include in my CV anymore yeah. because I don't apply for jobs in a specific um, in the health industry. If I wanted to apply for an HR position within the hospital, however, I would probably implement that. I would take that into the into account to um, tell them, hey, see, I've seen how it works at a hospital. Okay, great. So now let's say, okay, my 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 CV was selected or shortlisted, okay, and now I am invited for the interview. How should I prepare? I yeah. mean, I memorize. Should um, what? What should I do? What do you usually tell your client how to prepare? Yes. So normally, um, hopefully, you have already done a lot of research because normally, what happens is you do a lot of research before you even start writing the application. So, and for the cover letter. You also, you already find out something about the company, like the mission, their vision. Are there any social projects that they're working on and that you are interested in as well? And you use this as a basis for the job interview as well. But you extend your research a little bit more. So, for example, on top of that, I always... Um, yeah, I always give the advice to take a look at the stock market, for example. Take a look at the stock market and what the share is of that company, if the company has shares already, if they are at this on the stock market already. Because from that, you can see how the company has developed over the last couple of years. Are they actually growing or are they like, is their, their performance declining? Mm -hmm. Especially given this pandemic now, because now you can see how has this company actually worked during the pandemic? Are their shares still increasing or not? Mm -hmm. And here I would also be very, very um, careful because just because a share rises doesn't really mean that the company is doing very well. It could also mean, okay, they have dropped a lot, of, uh, a huge amount of um, personnel. So they have basically said uh, they have fired many people and that's why they don't have many fixed costs anymore. But that obviously increases the share again for the stakeholders. So this is something that I would um, also do in advance just to find out whether the company is actually doing great or whether they are not so not doing so well. And something that is very important and that I always tell all of my clients because they kind of sometimes get anxiety just before the job interview. They are excited. They are nervous. They really want to have this job. So uh, it's a lot about motivation. So, and that's what I always tell my clients. First of all, you are there and try to see it from a different perspective. Try to see it not like, I really want this job. I need this job. I, I, there is no other option for me out there. Just go into the job interview and find out, okay, how 
can I find out whether this job, whether this company is actually a good fit for me, for me personally? Do I really like to work with them? Because from the way how the recruiters are asking you, so during the job interview, there might be an HR person, a person from your department where you will be working in, and maybe a manager of both of these, or somebody from the work council, that could be as well. And from the way how they are phrasing their sentences and the way how they are asking and interacting with you, you can already feel whether they are polite, whether they have an engaging personality, whether you are, whether this, the, the people you are actually working with will be people that are approachable or whether they are actually discriminative with all of the things that they are doing and saying. And this has happened to me before when I was in an interview because this person was really, um, drilling me and was trying to get me to the point that I cry and I didn't cry during the interview but afterwards I cried like a little baby <laughs> and um and it's just for them to see whether you can stand all of their questions so whether you can answer all of their questions and after that when I was crying like a little baby I knew okay even if I get that job and I got the job they offered the job to me but I knew I'm not going to work with them because if they are acting in that way already during the job interview this is not a company that I would like to work with and this is something that you need to see and that's what I always try to tell the candidates if you are looking from an outside view then you can go into the interview a little bit more relaxed and something that you need to do just before the interview, like five minutes before that, go and look into a mirror and tell yourself, you can do this. You get this job. And then you smile and then you go into the interview. And this is what really helps. It, it encourages you. It makes you happy from the inside. And this is what you then present during the job interview. And then everything else will fall into place. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I was also I was also told about this. You know? Some, they said during the interview, don't beg. Don't, yeah. don't show them as if they are the only option you have. Yes. Like, show them that they are just one of the options. Yes. You know, I mean... It's 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 like a negotiation um, activity. I said, okay, this is what I can what this is what I can offer to you. So yeah. let me see what you can offer to me. Are we match or yes. not? I mean, it's not like no, no, please, please give me this job. I mean, like oh, I'm gonna die. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's that's it. And I think it's always nice to enter when you enter the conference room. Smile. Yes. Right. <laughs> changes the ambience it changes the mood you know when you smile i mean it, it makes a lot of difference yeah yes. so okay going back again to interview yeah you could give me one advice what should i not do during the interview what should i be yeah. doing during the interview what it yes. is so the one thing that you should never do is lying <laughs> so never lie during the interview because at some point the recruiters will find out and if they don't find out during the job interview they might find out during the probationary period right. or even later and then you're not on a good foot with one another <laughs> and um, also another thing that I would always recommend in the first couple of minutes is try to not say no in the very first couple of minutes of the interview. So it's basically during the um, small talk or when they're offering you, for example, they're offering you a coffee, but this is actually something that you should never, never take. You should never take a coffee during a job interview because you are already nervous and the caffeine will make you even more nervous. You kick in after half an hour, and then, you're, then you're just like a Duracell bunny or something like that. Yeah. So um basically don't say no thank you but say oh thank you very much but i'd prefer to have a water for example yeah so try to rephrase it and just in the first couple of minutes try not to use the word no this is very good for the um psych for a psychological effect of the other side but also for yourself because you are very positive if you're trying to just get a couple of yeses yeah so the this is also what the recruiters are trying to to do actually in the very beginning they try to ask questions that they know the candidate feels comfortable with that might be questions about your hobbies or obviously during the small talk how did you get here and so on but then they ask for the water or for coffee and then try to not say no in the very first minutes of the interview. 
Yeah, I, well, I always um ask for water because <laughs> yeah. coffee makes me like what you said, nervous, and it will make me go to the toilet more often. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, good. Mm-hmm. Well, now we are now. I think for more than a year now, we are experiencing this difficult situation with Corona, and you know, job market is also changing. Okay, uh, what do you think are the skills or competence that people should improve or should develop? Um, in a, uh, to be able to land a job during this time. Yeah, so with regards to competencies, it's actually everything that is related to digitization, I guess, because um, the, the, the problem is basically that we cannot tell you when you can go back to the office. And a lot of companies are already thinking about shrinking down their offices and just simply offering something like, um, Uh, just mixed times basically that you are three days at home and two days you're in the office and the three days when you are at home another colleague is at the office so basically you have this kind of like a, a shared desk or something like that so with that being said it is very important for obviously for all of the companies to um, develop their IT infrastructure so that everybody can actually work from home. But it's also very important for people from um, who are applying now to be able to, or to know how to use Zoom or something like, um, I think Microsoft Meets or Google yeah. Meet or something like that, because this is actually how the companies are doing their interviews. Nowadays, they don't have to fly you in anymore. Actually, they are saving lots of money just because of that, because they can do the job interviews online now. So, and from there, you can already see, or the employer can see whether you can work with this sort of um, software or with that sort of um, video chatting. And also with that being said, sometimes you need to prepare a presentation or you need to prepare just some, some small part that is a, uh, an example of what you would be doing at your job. So they might be telling you, okay, we give you 15 minutes now, you prepare a presentation and after that presentation, um, after you've prepared that presentation, you give this speech to us and you prepare that. So, and then you not only need to know how you can communicate like we do, but you also need to know how you can share your screen, for example, and how you can use like a marker or something like that. So these are the skills as well. But then also, and this is something that I highly recommend all of the companies to do as well, to engage into communication. So basically we need to find a different level of how to communicate. A lot of employers and a lot of, or a lot of employees feel isolated because they are at home. They feel disconnected from their team. They feel uh, lonely and left out just because they are at home maybe with their kids and they now have to do the double job of being a teacher or being a kindergartner and doing their own job and nobody really understands or listens to them. So something that um, might be also very interesting is like all of these workshops that are out there about mindfulness and work-life balance and all of these things, we need to focus more on that just in order to support our employees who are at home so they don't get a depression because that's obviously not of benefit to anyone. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not easy, especially those um, extrovert like me. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like staying home, yeah. working alone would make you really somehow depressed or, you know, it destroys, it could affect your mental health. Yes, and, I- That, that's that's good that um, you mentioned about companies should also invest on um, reconnecting yes. um, their their employees. May it be um, online or what? Mm-hmm. No? As long as they have that platform to connect. Yes. I mean, right. in my, in my um, work now next week we are going to have an online um, film viewing. You know, so <laughs> we said <laughs> right. uh, we said a, a time. It's like okay, we're going to watch a movie. We selected. Um, some movies to to watch so we will be watching uh, together i mean of course yeah. this is great houses yes. but yeah. after that we meet and then we discuss about the the, the film yeah you know what you like yeah but well, that's brilliant and that's exactly what companies need to do like a, an after hour coffee or something like that so that actually the the um interpersonal things that are being lost right now that somehow we can encourage people to do have that again exactly. so 
Um, and I see that there are a couple of companies who are doing that, but especially with expats, it's very difficult because your families are in a different country. You are worried about how your families are feeling and how the pandemic is working in that in, in your home country, but you are far away and you're all alone because you don't have your family with you. And then being excluded from your from your colleagues as well this is basically the the last string that you have so that's why companies need to encourage that and i love the idea of watching a film together and um and discussing later on afterwards. <laughs> so yeah so to those companies who are watching us right now listen to um the job yeah. coach and <laughs> So before I proceed to my last question, or la yeah, okay, now, um, where they can find you, Lisa? Maybe tell our viewers how to reach you, where to find you, where or how to contact you if they are if they want to learn more about um, job application in Germany. Yes, well, um, first of all, you can find me here on Facebook and on Instagram as well. So if you just simply type in Lisa Jans Job Coach Germany or just Job Coach Germany, you will find me. And I do have a YouTube channel as well. Once a week I go live and that's on a Wednesday in the afternoon. It's 2 p.m. So it's kind of like covering the entire globe because then it's in the evening in the eastern world and it's in the morning in the western world and then afternoon in the in the i mean in europe yes <laughs> right and um therefore so i go live once a week and then people can just ask questions about the job market and um simply you can find me on my on my uh, website as well lisajans.com but if you have any interest you just simply find me on Facebook or Instagram, Job Coach Germany, and then you can send me a direct message there. That's good. That's good. Okay, great. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we are <laughs> um, about to end this conversation, but let's why not end it with a general message or advice to those who are currently looking for a job right now or are almost losing hope to find a job right now, especially during this difficult um, time. But that, that's a great closure. So actually, I would like to give the advice to everyone that you shouldn't worry. There are jobs out there. Don't worry that you don't find anything. Of course, we are in a very difficult situation right now, but the positions that are being open pop up every day. So let's just, um, for example, also think about the way of how you can maybe manage to find a job in Germany. There are several platforms where you can find jobs. There are companies, the company websites where you can find the jobs and simply make up your mind what you want to do. And then from there, you just make the first step and apply. And then you will find a job in Germany. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you, you know. Um, it always starts knowing what you want. Yes. If you know what you want, it will drive you to the destination where you want to be, yes. where, where, you, you, where you want to be in, you know. Yes. And, and then it will just go. With mm -hmm. Okay, Lisa. It's thank, you very much. thank you thank you very much and I, I, I really learned a lot from yes. you I hope our viewers also learned a lot and I hope this conversation somehow um, helped them to improve or to make their application stand out and eventually to land a job here in Germany or anywhere um, in the part of the world okay so thank you and to our viewers Thank you for watching and staying until the last minute of this video and maybe there's some next time. Yeah. So happy weekend, everyone. Happy weekend. Thank you. Ciao.